So, that is what I was saying what required is proportional to crack tip length at the fracture a fracture at fracture energy T requires is proportional to C that is what is I was explaining you you know. So, he takes it T half sigma square this is what already we have looked into this we have understood C is proportional to square root of surface area C is proportional to square root of the surface area uh, per unit volume is thus inversely proportional to D. So, this C supposing C means you know large aggregate I am breaking it down to smaller aggregate. So, this the C would be related to this now the new new one I am creating and surface area per unit you know it is related to square root of surface area this is related to square root of surface area because uh, uh, if the diameter changes surface area is proportional to pi d square in a spherical one pi d square is a surface area. So, surface area is C is you know this D is this in a way C because I have broken it down to C. So, it is proportional to square root of surface area square root of surface area. So, surface area per unit volume. So, surface area per unit volume we have seen was 6 by D right surface and uh, the D if I reduce it down. So, it will be proper you know it is square root of C is proportional to square root of surface area surface area per unit volume thus is inversely proportional what it takes is inversely proportional to D because this would be this comes to this place again 6 to D. So, this C is inversely proportional to D larger you have a large aggregate breaking into smaller aggregate right. So, you have to create supposing originally it was D originally it was D now you got to make it another sphere. So, D by 2 let us say or sphere becomes difficult rectangular or you can easily understand. So, this becomes D by 2 this becomes D by 2 or rectangular you know parallel or pipette or cubic 1 if you want to divide it into 2 you will get 8 cubes out of this actually if you break it break down into D by 2 and so on. So, basically when you that means fracture you will be creating in 8 surfaces right d by 2 8 surfaces you will be creating. So, it is inversely proportional to d same idea 6 by d larger the d I mean smaller the d more number of more surface area. So, this is what surface is inversely proportional to d d smaller more surface area per unit volume. So, his law is comes from this kind of concept assuming is for irregular particles crack length is proportional to he takes 1 by d to the power s b before n. So, instead of taking 1 by d that was the first law I talked about letting us then kicks and then bonds law is something like under root d. So, he used under root d because surface area pi d square. So, if you reduce down the you know size surface area will increasing and it will be proportional to surface area is proportional to root over d because pi d square is the surface area. So, s is pi d square right. So, he takes therefore, root over instead of taking log and all that and he writes it in this manner. So, Finally, these are empirical as I said this is also empirical instead of taking d linearly he takes it this neither logarithmically he takes this. So, this is what and that apparently apparently has been uh, most popular in this grinding and crushing care is expressed in terms of work index. This care has been expressed in terms of work index. So, it is defined in a manner right. So, bonds coefficient or whatever it is. So, bonds coefficient. So, it is work index is as the energy required to crush infinite size particle to particle saving size 100 micron corresponding to 80 percent passing in saving analysis. So, if you want to crush it to 100 microns then what is the yeah, total energy required k is bonds energy or bond work index is defined as the energy required to crush a, crush a very large system to a very fine system system having 
80 percent passing through 100 micron, 80 percent passing. So, that means total energy required work index is a total energy required to crush it from infinite size to a very fine size, right. Energy required to crush infinite size particle to particle having 100 micron, 80 percent should pass through 100 micron. So, d values in equation corresponds to 80 percent passing rather than average. So, d if you are talking of d in this equation is 80 percent passing, 80 percent passing not average size, right. So, therefore, p this is the power per unit mass flow rate feed this is w y is equals to k r 1 minus 100 to infinite size largest size. So, before it was large size finally, it is 100 micron. So, the value this is this is what is called work index. So, k r is equals to you know this if you take this simply nothing but k r into 1 by 1 by 10 k r into 1 by 10. So, 10 k r into 1 by 10. So, 10 w y is equals to k r. So, this is this you know so k r is related to 10 w y. So, work index can be found out in a given system this can be found out because I take large mass sufficiently large mass compared to 100 micron I mean could be you know very large rock or something of that kind or depending upon the crusher that I am using especially for cement if I am using I do not have to go even to uh, rock size you know I have like clinker largest clinker size and so on from the 100 micron. So, micron to millimeter you know centimeter sizes that should be good enough that will give you 0 sufficiently large. So, that is k r is equal to 10 work index and work index is defined in this manner which is measurable and these values are actually given for certain things. So, bond law then therefore, writing p and f d 80 percent and they take size as 80 percent you know we said d s a that would mean that that size 80 percent passing through you know the size through which for example, 80 percent passing through 100 and 100 micron I was saying. So, they do not take average size rather 80 percent passing size they take. So, 80 percent d 80 percent is taken. So, it would be something like this 10 d is the constant now work index 10 and this you can find out this as I said this is measurable this is measurable because you can take large size crush them to 100 micron 80 percent passing through 100 micron whatever you get you know it will be 10 times I mean you get you get basically uh, 10 w y is the care. So, you find out the power p by m dot for that case and that is equals to nothing but uh, k r which is equals to 10 k i you know which is equals to 10 w y. So, you can actually this measurable w y is measurable. So, w y is the materials are known from experiments thus power per unit mass can be calculated right. So, writing p and f for d diameter of the product 80 percent product and this is for feed. So, this is the feed and this is the product. So, feed size 80 percent passing through right 80 percent supposing I had all 80 percent 10 mm size of the clinker hypothetically 10 mm is too large actually it will be much smaller 10 mm size of the clinker 80 percent passing through 10 mm only 20 percent is above 10 mm then that will be my feed and then finally, I grind it to let us say 50 micron. Now, 50 micron then if I know the W y work index which is measure, measured already measured experimental work I can find out what will be the power or you know power per unit mass power per unit mass. So, that is the idea that is Bond's law that is Bond's law right. So, that is Bond's law that is Bond's law. So, that is what is used people use and this this concept they use quite often this. Now, this concepts can also be used in aggregate if you have a mechanized aggregate processing system this is used in cement or similar kind of material in chemical technology you know bonds this bond bonds work index. So, that is the energy required or power required p by m dot required for in a crusher you know the feed rate power required can be measured from very large, large size to crush it down to 100 micron down 80 percent down and then you know the power you have measured. So, that is your work index 10 of that work index is the 
the k k value constant value and then you use in this form to 10 w y and if you know the feed size let us say now now you know it is uh, 3 millimeter and you want to make it to 50 millimeter or 5 millimeter to 50 millimeter what is the power per unit mass that you can find out. So, grinding energy can be found out in this way right. So, uh, this will depend upon what? This will depend upon the type of material you have. Cement clinker will have a very high value, fly ash will have much less value. This will be much higher for cement because it is a you know it is actually clinkerized material hard material. Fly ash is which is produced it will require much less. Similarly, uh, the sizes also would be different. So, it will depend upon the sizes and also this value. Similarly, if you take limestone powder its W y might be different and these values are actually listed down. People have listed down doing experiment they have actually listed down right. So, different types of uh, grinders different type of grinder crushers they have actually listed down. So, one can use them to find out what is the power required. Now, so, that is what I was saying when you use uh, high bellite cement, grinding energy is also less. Remember some, some of those cements I said grinding energy is also less that is because the mass that is to be grinded is less harder. So, they require less energy of production. So, if you are replacing flyers not only that you are actually reducing down you know the carbon dioxide production from there but the grinding energy which is not uh, directly uh, uh, you know it is only for the grinding part later on because you might be mixing the flyers together with the cement and intergrind them together. So, grinding energy also would reduce depending upon the percentage of flyers you are using. Similarly, if it is GGBFS they will have different WY so according to the So, I think that is related to some idea about grinding right and uh, then we look into some issues of operational energy, some issues of oper operational energy right some issues of operational energy. Now, if you see operational energy which we will look into later on, we will look into later on uh, if you see the code for example, any code energy code you will find that in condition building where energy is used it is largely depends on insulation. They would suggest that insulation value. So, when we look into let us say uh, ECBC in, in energy con uh, building uh, co energy conservation right. So, there you find that they are all talking mostly of the insulation. So, when you have a conditioned space main thing is a insulation part of it and the property that we deal is called U value. Those who are not familiar for them quickly you see if you have if I have heat flowing at constant temperature from this side to this side let me say T 1 and T 2 then heat is flowing along this direction. So, this temperatures are constant that means, there is no increase in temperature here whatever Q heat is coming out here is going out at the outer periphery wall or slab or whatever it is and in that case you will have a temperature gradient existing from T 1 to T 2 temperature higher here temperature lower here and it is governed by basically Fourier's law right. So, this Q is given as K A T 1 minus T 2 divided by if this thickness is L it is given by T 1 minus T 2 divided by L right. So, this is called thermal conductivity of the building material or material that I am dealing with if it is homogeneous material and what we have seen further also that there will be some there will be some you know there will be some sudden if the air temperature is too you know air here and let me say 2 T no this color is I am not happy with this color let me change T mm -hmm, same showing T 2 A let me call it and T 1 A to denote the air temperature. Air temperature will be higher here and there will be a sudden drop here and there will be a sudden drop there to T to A. So, there is a fine air layer through which equivalent conduction or you know heat transfer takes place through radiation and convection because there is air layer solid can never be there alone it is surrounded usually by air. So, the air there is a heat transfer from air to here and from 
air to this place, right? And that also same Q must be coming there, same Q must be going out to the air as well. Because the temperatures are not changing, everything is remaining constant. So, nobody is absorbing the heat, no material is absorbing the heat, the heat coming in must be equal to it going out. In such cases, this Q can also be written as if I call this as equivalent conductivity of this one is HI and this is HO, let me call it equivalent conductivity or equivalent conductance as we call it because their thickness is not known to me. So, L over K I take L over you know L K over L. So, we write it as this in this manner H into H into same area into T 1 A minus T 1 must be equals to H into H I was calling it H O H I A T 2 minus T 2 A 2 A. So, this, this is the expression one can write and from this if one combines one can actually do a simple exercise because one can write like this you know this Q's are all same. So, I can write T 1 minus T 2 divided by T 1 minus T 2, T 1 T 2 is equals to Q into L divided by K A. Similarly, T 1 A minus T 1 I can write, right? I just let me go a little bit for those one who have not done this course or similar thing before. T 1 can be written as Q by H naught into A and T T 2 minus T 2 A can be written as Q by H i A. And if I sum this 3 up, you can see that this will first cancel out with this one because there is a minus sign and uh, uh, you know this will this will cancel out with this one and uh, uh, if I am summing up everything, what I will be left with is T 1 A minus T 2 A. This 3 I sum up, this 3 I sum up and I can show that if I sum this up, I will just clear this off a little bit. If I sum this up T 1 A minus T 1 plus T 1 minus T 2 plus T 2 minus T 2 A. Let me write this out. I wrote this as a Q divided by H O A plus Q divided by you know Q divided by K L right A again plus Q divided by H I A if I if you remember this and this will all cancel out leaving T A minus T 2 A is equals to T A 1 A minus T 2 A is equals to Q into 1 by H O plus 1 by L over K plus 1 by H i. So, you see there is a similarity between all the expressions there. So, combining this we call this 1 over u, you know this one we call as 1 over u. Combining the conduction through 3 layers, the solid one air layer outside, another layer outside. So, I call them and we call this as u. So, u is nothing but transmittance between air to air transmission transmittance between air to air and you can see that the K that is thermal conductivity of the material plays a very strong role there. So, if you want to improve insulation you should be you should be low higher K means higher U 1 over U is equals to 1 by H i plus L over K plus 1 by H o. So, 1 by U is this. So, higher K means higher u. Insulation means you should be less, insulation means you should be less, k should be less, right. Insulation means you should be less, k should be less. In other words, the q can be written as, q can be written as from this it follows, just I will write at the top, from this it follows, erase this out and write this, from this it follows that q is equals to you know u q is oh it's not clean properly okay q is equals to u a t1 minus t1 a minus t2 a that's what it will be so 
U is the property of the wall or slab or I mean room or roof, I mean sorry, roof, uh, ceiling or the roof or anything of that kind, two dimensional surfaces which is called transmittance or we call it U value. And it is a, it is you know this multiplied by the area. So, if I take Q by A flow per unit area, this will be U multiplied by temperature difference. So, Q is equals to Q is equals to U A delta T as we write it. So, generally we write it like this Q A is equals to U A delta T. So, if I reduce down U, my heat flow will be less. So, lower U means better insulation, lower U means better insulation, lower U means better insulation and you have seen that 1 over U is equals to sigma L over K K i. If there are many of them, number of layers then I can write it in this manner plus 1 by H i plus 1 by H o. So, in other words conductivity of the materials higher, I have higher U value. Higher conductivity means higher U value because they are in the same you know 1 by u is 1 by k length thickness higher the thickness lesser is the u value. So, thicker the material more is the insulation more is the conductivity less is the insulation right. So, lesser is you know u, u should be low Insul better insulation means u should be low transmittance should be low. So, higher insulation means lower u lower u which means lower k as well, but thickness should be more. So, thermal conductivity is an important parameter for, for all the walling and roofing material ceiling and roofing material because heat transfer takes place to the envelope and their insulation you will find that the codes actually restrict this u values, u values for you know if the energy codes they would suggest that okay your u value should be between this and this or something of that kind if it is prescriptive as we shall see later on or you know your, you want to get lead rating etc energy has to be you can get a lot of lot of points from energy efficiency and there the u value plays a big role. So, we would be talking about u value you know in the thermal con therefore it is important to look into thermal conductivity. So, U value is important material for mechanically conditioned building that is what I was trying to explain right that is what I will try to explain ok. And we will look into the next room unconditioned build, building of course, uh, thermal capacity is also important. In unconditioned building thermal composite capacity is also important because of something called time lag and amplitude decrement you know I am not interested in the in this class related to this too much because you see the you can look into the temperature variation 24 hours in this manner. So, what we would like to have is inside temperature, inside temperature we would like to have inside temperature we would like to have inside temperature obviously we like to be something like this 24 hours same 24 hours right. So, it will have this is called amplitude decrement this ratios and this is called phase lag or time lag you know from here to the here this is the time lag peak to peak the time difference that is called time lag. So, this is also important in hot dry climate because daytime heat if you can utilize in the night cool time that is very good in desert we are not interested in this in this particular class we are interested in this part right. So, I think we will stop here.